Hi there, it's Alexandra from the Middle Sized Garden and today I am looking at a garden where topiary has made a huge difference, not just to making it a stunning garden in the winter, but also making it look gorgeous in the summer because topiary adds sharpness and definition and structure to that wonderful abundance of summer flowers. And I think what puts a lot of us off, us amateurs, on topiaries, we think, well, we'd never be able to cut them into shape or if we buy them in shape, would we be able to keep them in shape? Which is why I love this garden, which belongs to my friends Robbie and Diane, because Diane would completely define herself as an amateur. She's self-taught. She's never been on a topiary workshop or anything like that. And what she's done is to use the simplest shapes, which are the cones and the balls, to create a really dramatic impact. And so it's a stunning winter garden. It looks gorgeous in the summer as well, but it is particularly useful in the winter. And Diane's done this by following a few simple principles of design. She also is an amateur painter and she's very, got a very good artistic eye, but actually we can all follow those, those principles. Diane took the architecture of her house as a starting point and whatever the architecture of your house, it is a great inspiration for the garden. In her case, they live in a Kentish Oast house. Now, Kentish Oast houses were originally where hops were stored and dried. Basically, they are a rectangular barn with one or more circular rooms attached with a conical roof. The hops would be stored in the rectangular barn and then they would be dried under wood fires in the circular rooms and the conical roof was where the smoke used to come out. Now, pretty much all of these have now been converted into homes because obviously there's new technology and modern barns. And so you see these Kent Oast House homes all over Kent. So it was the circular rooms and the conical roofs that started her thinking about box balls and box cones. And the principles that she used could be summed up with repetition, balance and harmony. And those three principles are used in design everywhere. And as I said, she probably wasn't consciously thinking it was just a very good instinctive thought. I think I used the, the Oast House as a base. So we have kilns and we have round um, bases. So I used that theme to do box balls everywhere. Just thought it was in keeping. So let's look at repetition. When you go along the front path at Diane's house, you will see lots of topiary balls, one after the other, and it looks, having them all together like this, looks fantastic. That's repetition. It's something that you can use with the simplest of shapes, and indeed very simple shapes look fabulous repeated. Balance is another important design principle, and Robbie and Diane have used balance by putting either topiary balls or topiary cones at entrance points. The Kent countryside can be very windy, so they've divided their garden up into rooms. And where there are gates or entrances between the rooms, there are topiary balls or topiary cones flanking them. Harmony is a very interesting design principle and Diane and Robbie have achieved this by using box for all their topiary. Now here in South East England, box has had a huge number of problems. It has had box blight and box caterpillar moth and Diane has been lucky that she hasn't had these, but she's also maintained quite a rigorous hygiene process. But it's been a worry all the way through trying to um, keep the health of the plants and so I can't say that we are brilliant at feeding, but we use, whether we're using the right stuff or not, I don't always know, but we're using bone meal, sometimes some liquid seaweed, um, and we just throw it down after we've done the pruning. I've researched a few bits, but not as much as I ought to have done, to learn that you water from underneath, you don't water box from above so that you can protect the leaves. Um, so food and watering has been, and the clipping has been pretty good, I think. Another design principle is called the power of three. And here you can see three simple box cones outside a window. Looks fabulous. Punctuation is also an important element in design, particularly if you want to accentuate something that's quite loose and free flowing, like a great cloud of beautiful flowers in the summer. So at the end of some of the paths, Diane and Robbie have put box cones. Contrast is another fantastic design principle and you can really see this in Diane and Robbie's winter garden because the sharp sculptural shapes of the topiary really work well against the shaggier forms of some of the evergreen shrubs. They work well against the sort of ethereal fountains of grasses they've got here and also while you're about it 
look at all the different colours of foliage. That's, I think, fabulous. I love the way they've done that. And of course, contrast in the summer with topiary works very well because if you've got a great cloud of beautiful flowers, that also works well. Diane has now got to the stage where she wants to do some more challenging shapes and she has actually done also a box spiral and a box parterre. And those are a bit more work and a bit more demanding, although not in the end difficult. She does say of the parterre that it does take quite a long time to clip. Diane bought quite a lot of her plants really quite small, so they weren't expensive and she let them grow in the ground for a few years. You can see that there's some planted here against the path. And then she started to clip them when they were perhaps two years old. If she wanted a particularly large box ball or she wanted it to grow fast, she did plant two or three plants very close together. It's quite easy to buy box cones and balls, but because of the issues with disease, it is worth going to a reputable nursery that's been disease free rather than just simply buying any old one that you will see in, say, a supermarket. The RHS also recommends that when you buy a new box, that you actually keep it in a sort of secluded part of the garden, if you can, away from the other box plants for about three weeks to see if there are any problems with it. The other thing that Diane does is she maintains the health of her plants. Healthy plants aren't so vulnerable to disease. When she comes to trim them, she keeps one pair of shears. She uses Nuwaki shears, which are brilliant. They have a lovely long, thin blades, which can be used for topiary. And she turns them over and uses them on their side and uses them in any sort of way. And then she'll tidy up the extra little, any extra little ends with a pair of secateurs. But she keeps those only for the topiary. She doesn't let anyone else use them and she doesn't use anyone else's tools. So if someone was to help her with her topiary, she would ask him or her to use her tools because I'm very conscious that debris from box is the biggest issue to getting box blight. And so we've even gone as far, so we'll cover the ground with mainly sheets actually, um, and then we will hoover with a Henry, one of those little Henry machines. So we hoover afterwards to get up as much of the, the debris as we possibly can, which looks terrible if a neighbour's coming to visit and you're out in the garden with a hoover. But nonetheless, I think that's helped quite a lot. Maintaining a good airflow through the plants is, is important. So when Diane's cutting a box ball, she'll take the circle to right underneath the ball so that there's better airflow. And then she'll make sure she shakes all the little bits of leaf out of that box ball so that it's not just rotting away in the middle there and indeed any other fallen leaves that land on the box balls. I've started to do all the disinfectant of the, the blades and what have you, but being me, I didn't research it properly and I left the blades in the bleach and so forth and they go rusty. So you've really got to do the whole thing properly. Uh, I think I'm there now. It's also worth making sure that you prune your topiary at the right time of year. Diane and Robbie used to live abroad and they were actually only home in June. So that's when she used to clip the topiary. But she'd come back and find a sort of bronze film over it where the plants had been singed by the hot sun. And she realised that actually you need to do it in later summer, like late August, or the RHS also say you could do it quite early summer, like May. Don't clip topiary on a really hot day because that is going to help burn the leaves. You can use other plants. The RHS recommends a kind of holly called Ilex crenata. You can also clip some honeysuckles to a frame. You can also use yew, which is more slow growing, but it is a wonderful plant and it regenerates very well. There are a few conifers that can work well, one called Podocarpus type, and that has very small leaves and will clip to a shape. So what about actually cutting the shape? Well, Diane doesn't use a frame. You can buy frames and I'll, I'll put a link to some in the description below and you open them up. It's like a wire frame and then you close them around the topiary and you can clip around that. But of course that means that in size you are restricted to the frame that you use. And once you get used to doing something by eye, you just get better at it. And these are plants, they will grow. I think if you've got a good eye for three-dimensional structure, you're okay. Um, if you haven't, then I think with um, you can, you can buy forms or you could use a piece of chicken wire and put that on and cut around. A lot of people do that sort of thing. You know, they create their shape, put it on the plant and then cut over it. I tend with the large ones simply to start in the centre at the top 
and go down in four intersections and cut it from there. That gives you your shape for your sphere. And I think it's really important to get a good sphere. It depends what you want to create, but some people just go straight down to the ground. But I cut it as a sphere so that there is some cutting to do underneath. And I think that's good generally to keep the quality of the plant because you're letting in more air. Diane started off with quite a few box balls just simply in pots and then she as they grew she repotted them into bigger pots and then after a few years it's absolutely clear they'd had enough of time in the pot and there's an area just by her front gate and she used to these slightly sad looking box balls she used to kind of decant them there give them a feed and just leave them and in fact it's a lovely little area now of what had been it was almost kind of a hospital zone for box balls and it now looks just beautiful in fact she is going to try and train one of them into a sort of rabbit shape and having been doing this for some time, she is now ready to move on to a pheasant or something like that. And It's very rewarding. Everybody loves it because it brings out that imagination of yesteryear, although you can have some really um, modern designs. And that's where I think I want to go, having looked at gardens around Europe. Um, I want to try something wacky. If you found this helpful, please do hit like because then I'll know you'd like to hear more about plants or leave a comment in the description below. I love to hear comments and also suggestions for anything else you'd like to see. And I've put together a winter garden playlist all about plants that are very good year round, for example, like conifers. And if you'd like more tips, ideas and inspiration for your middle sized garden, do subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.